Hi, everyone, and thank you for being here. And when I say thank you for being here, I, I truly mean it. It's not uh, just to pander to you. And, and the reason that this is so um, important is, is partially because it's, it's important to express gratitude as an attitude. But it's also, um, it's also because attention is the force that creates reality. And uh, you can think of the dimensional ladder as, um, s well, manifestations of different parts of the united all that holds greater and greater degrees of attention and focus. And so when you move to dimension 13, which is all there is, or God, or the divine, or the universe, or the multiverse, or the cosmos, or what, whatever you want to, um, to call it, the uh, sublime being, this is essentially the force that focuses itself into all perceived experience that is playing out at the same time. And it, it does so because it has unwavering attention. And this is essentially the force of love. It's, it's the benevolent observation and allowance of everything that ever um, exists and passes in, um, in the lower dimensions as uh, something that is allowed for and seen and uh, accepted. And uh, this is so important to, to remember um, because this is essentially this is essentially, um, from the human perspective, also the most essential instrument in your spiritual toolkit. So um, the more attention you can cultivate within yourself and in, in your mind, um, the more you can create or manifest or bring about your will or, or whatever is your preferred way of, um, of expressing this. But it's essentially the fact that whatever you direct your attention to becomes loaded with energy and that becomes the perceived reality. And so that is why it's, I'm deeply grateful that, that people are here and watching this because it, it means that you are creating this situation that, that I am, I, uh, of course, am orchestrating in, in some way. And, um, and that's deeply important to me. That's um, wonderful. And at the same time, uh, yes, I, I wanted to relay, so there's also this myth where, you know, if you can uh, watch the leprechaun without him getting away, uh, without your attention being broken, you get the pot of gold at the end of the red rainbow, which is essentially a, a very uh, funny and an Irish way of expressing this idea that, well, if you can cultivate unwavering attention, uh, you come into yourself and, uh, and you feel completely um, fulfilled. And that is also why different spiritual practices in, in yoga, it's called ekagrata, I believe, uh, one-pointedness. But you will find this in every spiritual system, that what you are essentially cultivating, your ability to hold attention. And also notice what is what we're realizing in, in our economic systems as we move from uh, systems of scarcity and lack and into systems of abundance what really becomes the commodity is essentially attention. And, uh, well, you can monetize those eyeballs as, as it's expressed in, um, in internet uh, lingo. So, so the more clicks and likes and uh, views you can garner, uh, the more you can sort of sell yourself as a product or whatever it is you're, you're peddling um, to people. And, and I certainly... Uh, Hope, I try not to peddle anything to people, um, but I'm very guilty of, of, of this myself. And lately I've been realizing that the, the, the moment in my life that I was the happiest I've ever been was right before I began channeling. And, uh, and there I found that, uh, well, I, I didn't demand anything of reality. I was in total acceptance of what happened. And I was very, very happy just sitting out in, in my small... Uh, um, a hermitage, uh, you know, my house in, in the woods, uh, my, um, my hermit cell, uh, being there with my cat and meditating and walking in the woods and, uh, and feeling good. And I, I had the surplus to really change things as I, I wanted. Um, and, and that was beautiful. And then I felt I was sort of guided or led into this path. And then it has been very, very meaningful uh, for me. But I also, of course, realize now that uh, what has happened to me is that 
all the things that I escaped out in that place in the woods um, by not relating to people and not being socially invested. They have returned to me to be healed in this channeling uh, practice um, or in the work I do trying to get this out to people and you know, sustain myself by selling sessions and, and those things. And, and what I have become terribly guilty of in, in this practice is, uh, is well, feeding those insecurities that need for validation, um, which uh, I also realize adds uh, a certain undercurrent of, uh, of inauthenticity to it, which I'm, I'm in, in no way uh, content with. And it's 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 because now now I'm realizing that I I've sort of come into this point where I either need to pull the practice uh, pull the plug on what's going on here totally, or I need to stop paying personal attention to to people and offering them validation. And I've always been the type who was pretty good at, at concentration. That's of course the you know the the Latin term we we use in in the West, which is uh, well means. Um, um, with with centeredness, right? So the idea that it's a very good term that that sort of when you concentrate your your being, you become this perfect circle that's centered around a a point. Um, but my concentration is constantly broken, uh, partially by um, well well partially by you know tending to the channel and worrying about how that's doing and and worrying oh how do i please the people who's watching this and how do i bring them content that will get me more eyeballs and and all that stuff and and also because uh, i signal to people my wounded child that's in deep need of of affirmation and uh, and validation and it's it's very very unhealthy for me and it's very unhealthy for um the people that i offer that um that sense of, of then, you know, the beauty of being seen uh, that I offer my attention to, because in a sense I'm keeping them in a state of of spiritual infancy where they get to be validated um, by the fact that I'm I'm seeing them and and I've always been that that was what I was saying uh, I, I've always been this type of person where they would meet strangers and then they, they, they start telling me their life story and I don't know how to extricate me from it and, and sometimes it can be be interesting but it's 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 also something that I I don't really prefer like I'd rather be in the monastery working on illumination so trying to figure out what was the brilliance of, of James Joyce or whatever uh, those are actually the things that that interest me or or communicating with the divine like I, I don't really uh, we have this expression in, in Danish about uh, people uh, going on about their sick end which basically means someone who goes on about something that isn't relevant to to anyone else than themselves and being like the, the superficially polite culture that we are, uh, it's hard for us to to sort of extricate us from that situation because we don't want to uh, hurt people overtly. Um, but like I'm, I'm finding that the amount of messages I correspond uh, to and the emails I reply to and and um, sort of the contrived friendliness that I, I think I I, I, tr I bring forward because I. Well, I feel like I don't want to alienate these people, and I really want to, uh, I really want to help them and validate them. And they, they are of course also human beings caught in the wheel of time, and be compassionate and, and everything. And and at the same time, I'm hurting myself by listening to um, people's uh, stories. And 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 I have much love for for American uh, culture, so so don't take it uh, personally. But it is also like a a weird bumper sticker culture where people really like to tell complete strangers about their convictions and beliefs and uh, what they have gathered uh, in, in their garage and, and, and what is the name of the family members. And, and I, I'm, I'm simply unable to do it anymore. I, I, I find that, that it's, it's tiring, out, uh, tiring me out completely. Um, and so I, I've come to the conclusion that if I'm, I'm uh, to go on doing this um, the way I'm in servitude to other people and essentially what I who I consider myself working for is the pillar of fire or sometimes I also call it the firm um, but but this it's heaven like this beautiful radiant place where 
um, everything is united in a radiance of, of pure love and, and light and bliss and it's a wonderful place to go and that's actually the place I would like to return to so my priority in, in this physical body, my in many ways very selfish priority is I want to finish the, the great work or I, I want to get off the cycle of reincarnation and, and samsara um, so all these uh, appetites and uh, needs for validation and uh, my egoic concerns, um, those are not things I want to feed with this practice. And, 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 and I don't want to strive for other people's validation. So the, where I'm going to put my focus is um, essentially in, in trying to bring through these entities. And, and, um, and this also means that, that I've, been, I, I've been having these uh, strange uh, <laughs> pangs of, of consciousness uh, lately where I, I feel that a, a lot of the alien stuff is somehow not serving people. And it's essentially it, it surrounds the idea of, of first contact because to me this is a replay of the apocalypse. Like it's that with, right in a minute, in a minute, everything will be well. Uh, like m mom's gonna fix it all soon. Mom's coming back to set it uh, back the way it, it ought to be. Um, if there are any tool fans out there, but it's essentially this idea that, okay, at one moment, someone, something wonderful will happen. The skies will open and, and I'll be released from all this bullshit I've had to deal with in, in my life. And, and I will be with my alien buddies and, and magic children that are somehow mine and living on spaceships, but, but that I haven't been a parent to. They will descend and that will also be wonderful. And, and I think it's really, really unhelpful uh, because it brings you out of the immediate experience of you and it brings you out of your own locus or, or center of control and and that's I, I, I the, the slogan you'll find on my website is connecting others to themselves and, and I really uh, mean that deeply and profoundly that my business down here and what I hope this is serving is to awaken that sense of autonomy and creativity and the realization of your own wonderful magic power um, and that of course comes with the caveat uh, like uh, fingerprints that well you're not special and I'm not special or we are both special just like everybody else um, and that's the best thing we can do it's to to work these codes of, of compassion into to our lives and that compassion also has to extend uh, to ourselves and, and that, of course, can be a dangerous narrative for some people, but, but many of the people I, I encounter um, in this work are essentially uh, people who have been hurt by the world and, and often have old soul configurations and are pretty goddamn tired of, of reincarnating. And, and the more I can rewire those disparate parts into that deep sense of remembrance. I believe uh, Plato called it anamnesis. Uh, so the awakening or, or uh, the cessation of forgetfulness. So where you actually remember who you are, which is an, an infinite uh, ray of light that's materializing itself into an experience it can have so it can reawaken and reconnect, uh, reconnect to itself. And um, and I think I think the same uh, goes for me with uh, with you know with with, with spaceships and, and stuff like I I'd hate to keep people in the illusion that just because this uh, set makes a sound and resists my fingers when I bang on it it means it's actual physical dense reality because what we're living in is a type of dense dense dream that it takes a whole lot of time to to wake up to. And all these manifestations and physical appearances, they are just that, they're physical appearances. And so when you think about spaceships, it's, it, there's not some alien fleet that well, is just hovering above you, wanting to contact you. And, and I may just be wrong about that. Who knows? Life's a mystery. But, uh, but what is essentially happening is that these are objects or forces that are coming out of, of what's known as the the world soul or, 
or the spiritus mundi. Uh, and, and these are images that are coming forward to stir us into greater recognition of our true being as infinite creators of infinite realities. And, and so, uh, like, I've been thinking about this, so what I, I personally actually care about is beauty and truth and the increased physical well-being of men and, and the increase and the increased uh, mental stability of our species and the increased connection to that divine spirit uh, which flows into us and and I think at least for for the time being I'll um, I, I feel far more called to work with uh, angels and and also deities and then some of these higher dimensional uh, collectives but anything that's still in the physical, they might be very, very benevolent tricksters, but they're still tricksters. They like why would they communicate with you if they didn't have an agenda? And their agenda might be benevolent, but it's still their agenda. And 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 you need to come into and and I do too, your own sense of integrity and autonomy, and stop leaking energy to all kinds of things that that then influence you in negative ways because attention. And, and the direction is and the direction of energy are essentially um, the complete same thing and and when I'm when I'm doing my job in in this um, like I I I am successful when I manage to erase um, all the get goddamn idiocy idiocy and, and contrived notions of who I am and and who I want to be and everything and just step aside and and let this infinite flow of light to touch people and hopefully awaken something in themselves and and if you're growing from that i'm i'm deeply deeply grateful that i get to be an instrument for that but if it's uh, if it's something that's sort of ki keeping you twiddling your thumbs hoping that oh any time now the aliens will land and they'll uncover all the people who've been hard to me and made me a victim in my life and things will be set right that's the image of the apocalypse, and 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 the Christians have been waiting for that for two thousand years, and any any day now. But but essentially, I, I feel the same way about uh, the aliens that I, I that the, the, the doubting Thomas did about the resurrection. That uh, I'll see it when I believe it, and if these beings truly have spaceships and want me to work for them, they can goddamn show themselves on the sky and. Uh, and let me let me see it, or otherwise I, I I'll believe that it's like some sort of weird collective manifestation of ideas that's um, that's stirring us, and um, and like any idea that you begin to subscribe to in, in reality, essentially um, will manifest in a form of what we call it mild schizophrenia, and and thereby also knowing that that. Uh, Almost all people, except for Zen masters and stuff, are, are deranged uh, because it's it's that idea to to really believe something, to hold on to that that focuses this being into a state of of object um, objectivity, and and notice that well, you are in a sense right that that you are a victim of a a lot of forces because objectivity is. Is where I like, I like to try to um, uh, reintegrate these terms. It's where sin begins. It's taking something as an object instead of a, su a subject. It's it's thinking that something is outside you and therefore can be uh, instrumental and be uh, be used. And this is the force of of capitalism. Uh, it tries to turn everything into a commodity that can be utilized for certain purposes and then be be left behind and be discarded uh, in order for a, a new thing to be be used and and that's we, we need to move into a place where where by connecting to ourselves we stop constantly seeking for things in the outside world which is the objective world uh, that can somehow gratify us or distract us or um, or excite us or, or whatever and, and then come into that sense that in in a sense well your universal being it takes up everything and so everything is a is a part of you everything is is essentially the the, the subjective um, experience of love gratitude meaning that's manifesting itself in, in outward appearances 
and um, and I think that that's perhaps my my final notice and 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 you can perhaps also hear me coming out of, of some of that more forced positivity and, and try to to create and hold image here because that that's actually why I, I feel I'm I'm far more sincere um, but that is for instance like everything is a perspective and 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 there's always a proper perspective in any given situation that you you find yourself in um, and and that's why it's good to to be able to juggle these um, because again otherwise it, it becomes uh, ideology so so for instance the, the law of attraction when the ego gets a hold of this it becomes something that that you beat other people over the head with where it's like well but you create your own reality so if you're experiencing any some any shape or form of, of adverse uh, phenomenon uh, then it's essentially your own fault and and I don't uh, I don't need to be compassionate in in that and uh, and of course like this is a deep spiritual truth that everything happens by the volition of the eternal part of you or your higher self or your soul uh, that's contributing to certain experiences and, and for the proper unfolding of, of the cosmos and its totality. But if you're using that as, as a way to distance yourself from other people or recognizing um, the difficulty it, we all experience in being incarnate, uh, then you're essentially just a bad person. Um, so yes, of course, it's 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 in both interesting and fairly obvious that well, why is it that bad things always happen to to the Jews who have a whole book and, and culture about them being victimized by greater political forces and and their their God who they have a special relationship uh, to punishing them for uh, for not behaving like they should that that's of course interesting like a, a law of attraction phenomenon but but if you're using that to say that it's like the children who were injected in medical experiments and, and tortured to, to death in, in the death camps, uh, that it was somehow their fault uh, that this happened to them, then like you really need to check yourself before you wreck yourself and adjust your moral compass because um, that's the idea of, of compassion. And I think I've been confusing in this practice and, and tying a bow on this, um, like the sense of participation and offering people um, love with people pleasing, uh, which is, is one of my my <laughs> uh, one of my main challenges, uh, because it, essentially it's about uh, knowing that that somehow when a person arises in your ex or appears in your experience, you have somehow meaningfully crossed path uh, paths always. And there is a type of basic responsibility of being decent to that human being. And at the same time, it's about serving what's the most high in that human being and not feeding all their ego stuff and not trying to have your own um, infinite desires or, or sense of lack um, filled out either momentarily or... Uh, or, yeah, temporarily by by other people, and 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 that's personally where I I want to try to to move into, and that's also where I hope we can we can all move into where we we try to serve that highest part of ourselves and and build a world that's uh, that's worth uh, living in, and that that begins by loving ourselves and thereby also loving ourselves in the other, because there's essentially um, no no difference. So with that being said, I, I certainly hope some of you um, uh, took something from it and it's also just good to, to get off my chest and also having uh, said on the channel that, that like on, on, unless you're looking for spiritual counseling or, or, or trying to get my assistance in, in connecting uh, to, to yourself, like I, I, I don't want to hear your personal stories or whatever, or you're free to write me, I, 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 I don't mind reading them, but it's, I'm, I'm only going to reply in, in two uh, sentence responses because that's, that's the only way I can keep my focus on, on doing this work and actually bringing something valuable to other people. So again, uh, thank you for paying attention to whatever was said here and, and may your uh, eternally wakeful heart guide you home.
blessings.